Well, Miranda, I want to say thank you for being here today because this is your day off. And I understand because I've talked to other PR and, and we've tried to get other castmates on the show, but your filming schedule for the show, Chicago Fire, from what I understand, is just absolutely insane. It's crazy. I think it gets extra crazy um, in the winter months because just being outside in the elements is a whole other beast. I mean, this past week, we've been outside probably uh, three or four days out of the five days that we shoot. And it's literally, I mean, it's like pick up at like, you know, 4.45 a.m., 5 a.m. And then we wrap at like 6 p.m. And, and we're outside and we're in the gear. So it's like literally this past week, I mean, I would get home and I would grab a snack and I would go into my bed and I would curl up and I would <laughs> while I'm, while I'm like, falling asleep and that's my and that's my life off of set when it's cold <laughs> i know it, it's interesting because a lot of shows when they're filming they follow like a three or four or five day pattern 12 13 or 14 hours but you guys work a lot more hours than that because you're not just showing up on set doing scenes with your scene partners you guys are in gear you're driving trucks you're climbing buildings you guys are doing a lot, if not all of that work, right? That's not just a stunt double coming in unless you make it look that way, because if you did, you're very talented, but it seems like you guys are doing everything on your own. Yeah. I mean, I drive the truck. Um, when uh, Yuri Sardarov was here playing Otis, he drove the truck. When Joe Minoso was on truck, he drove the truck. Um, we all, yeah the in the the towering inferno episode where you saw taylor hanging off the side of the building that was taylor like we um we're really lucky rick lefevre is our stunt coordinator and he worked on dark knight um i mean just countless if it's shot in chicago uh rick lefevre <laughs> yeah did. he's very well known for doing that kind of stuff and i think that's what makes your show well all of your shows the the pd and med i think so believable i mean i'm not here to bash any tv shows because that's what i do as i talk to celebrities like yourself about their shows but i think your show is different in the fact that as long as it's been on the air and of course dick wolf he just puts out gold no matter what he does you guys just do something that i think is different from most of the high level drama that's on television if that makes any sense thank you yeah i agree with you i was i was watching our show two weeks ago and i was i was on the treadmill that's like my ritual like i'll get on the treadmill and like put it up on the tv and watch and like i just i was literally yelling at the tv like just, <laughs> i was like so excited and um and like my protege in the show um her name in real life is caitlin but i when she had her scene with bowden i was like yes caitlin yes girl but all like in all of that i just was so floored by how good our show is and just like there are so many different elements there's the drama there's the relational aspect yes we were talking about that before we started taping it's mm -hmm. just you and your main scene partner taylor he is just phenomenal and well all of you guys are great and even when you have a new cast member come along if someone leaves the show and then you have somebody new come on it's not like you know when you're watching television and they bring on a new cast member and you're like okay let's see how this goes I don't ever feel that way about your show or any of the Chicago universe shows because it's just so believable again and, and the writing and the directing and of course the scenery being in Chicago. I think that all must help you as an actor get into that mindset and your creative processes, right? 1000%, 1000%. I think a lot of it has to do with, yeah, 
the cast, the crew, the writers, like the whole production team. Um, and I think we're really lucky that from like the top down, I mean, Eamon Walker, Jesse Spencer, um, David Eigenberg, you know, Taylor Kenny, our leaders, all of our leaders um, have such big hearts and they lead from a place of love and they lead from a place of compassion. There's not this um, catty kind of, all right, well, let's see what you bring. It's always like, get in no. here, want you to feel comfortable, want you to feel at home, and we want you to do your best work. What's going on? How can we help you? And I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, you would feel the way that you do. And I hope that the rest of our audience feels the way that they do when a new character comes in is because that translates. It really does. And I think it puts the audience at ease as well, because it's not like the storyline is going to get disrupted in such a way where we're uncomfortable as viewers. And I think as an actor as well, I think you guys, you know, you just alluded to it and said the chemistry is great and all of that. So if you don't have series leads, call sheet number ones that make the rest of the cast feel comfortable it, I because I did a little bit of stand-in and background work back in the day when I lived in New Mexico and I know how it can feel uh, for somebody to come on set and not be prepared or to forget their lines I won't say but or to just make everything a thing all jumbled because I understand you don't want to be the one to stop production because of some sort of craziness and I, it's interesting, you know, again, we were joking earlier about, you know, this series arc right now, it seems like every season, somebody gets a main arc for a love story this time around. It's you and Taylor, you guys have been doing this for a while now. We're getting a little bit of resolution. If you haven't seen the show yet, I'm sorry, we might have some spoilers <laughs> up to what we've discussed, but uh, hey, watch the show and uh, we'll link it in our show notes, but you guys just keep things moving along. Now, I want to say, and I would be remiss if I didn't bear the headline, you've done a lot of other projects as well, and you going all the way back to uh, Pretty Little Liars and, and a lot of different things. When you started out, well, you have a background in, in music. You play instruments, you play cello, you sing, I think piano as well. All of that, when you were getting your start, Miranda, what sort of made you decide that you wanted to do acting versus pursuing all the other things that you are talented in, the instruments and all of the other art that you're able to do? It was really my manager, my first manager, Sheila Crawford. I went and I met with her when I was 19. And um, she actually, so her first husband was Roland Batista, who was the original guitar player in Earth, Wind and Fire. Wow. So, yeah, so she knew, she knew, you know, Larry Dunn, who is the like song, like legendary songwriter. He wrote all of the songs and played the keyboards for Earth, Wind and Fire. Um, so she, she knew a lot of people in the music industry in that, in that um, realm, like that soul, you know, um, 70s, 80s, like all of um, like that world. And she was like, I can connect you with them, but I mostly, as far as what I do, I'm a manager for actors. And, you know, that's a, that's a much quicker way um, to kind of find financial stability if, sure. you know, if that's, because there's no union in the music industry. Um, it's very, like the people who are successful, like I, I tip my hat and I bow so deep because it takes such resilience and, um, oh my gosh, such determination. And even if you have that talent, resilience, determination, a good team, it's still such a lottery. So um, basically... <laughs> It was just kind of me as a 19 year old going, trying to find, you know, a, a talent manager, her being like, well, you know, we could, we could do the music thing. And I, and I know some people, 
But what I think we should do is, you know, have you kind of gig on the weekends. Her husband um, uh, is, a, is a jazz drummer. And so he would take me with them to kind of gig all around, like, you know, California. So we do that while you're auditioning to, you know, be on television. Um, but actually, actually what happened was when I did the meeting with her, I told her I was a singer and then she had me read a commercial for her. And she was like, yeah, no, this, th this is what we're going to do. And so then I got into acting classes and, um, and from there it was pretty like things happened relatively quickly. Yeah. You had pretty much instant success in the sense of getting parts and being on TV. I think if I understand in researching your life, you, you like Law and Order was kind of one of your first gigs, right? And then that was you, my first gig on television. Yeah. That's, I think a lot of actors start on that show for some reason. Like it's just one of those shows that's been on for a million years, but how kismet is that, that you were on a Dick Wolf type show and now here you are years later on a show not you know not woman sweeping floor in warehouse you know they're always doing something <laughs> when they get questioned moving boxes you know cleaning a bar although you do that in the show too yeah it's just it's funny awesome. yeah it uh you're it's your it's your bar there molly so i like that because you just kind of got into it you got started you were gigging on weekends doing music did you have a job that you worked in nine to five that you were good at that you liked to do or no you just work to pay bills I mean, I, yeah like I um, <laughs> okay yeah no I never had I never had a nine to five that I was good at I think this is the longest job I've ever had period like, oh, okay oh <laughs> nice yeah so and it's a good one to have so that's that's a plus <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I think some people I don't know some people are better at just being able to kind of like muscle through and and doing what they got to do I, uh, yeah, I just am not, I'm very charismatic, <laughs> but I think that like, there's a reason why this is, this is the job that I've held down for five, almost six years. It's insane how long this show has been on television. It's, I asked that of all my actors that I talked to, because some of them, you know, had jobs. I was talking to one of the stars of Mixed Dish and she was telling me, when she got that job, she was Christina Anderson. She was working for a tech company out of the Silicon Valley, but in LA. And like, she's getting ready to do promo work for the show. And Kenya Barris and the crew come over to do a photo shoot. And she's like looking at her watch saying, I got to go back to work. And this, the room fell silent. And he's like, is there a problem? And she's like, I have to go back to my day job. And he looked at her and said, you're going to have to quit that job because yeah, you're, you're cool. not very good at, it. I mean, you might think you're good at it, but this is something that you're better at. And I get that. I think, you know, a lot of people come to LA or Chicago or wherever New York to try and get their hand in it. And the percentage of success I think is so minute, but then you had success early on. You did all of these things, you played music, and then you wound up on this show six years that show's been on for how long now almost nine seasons total it's been on it was one of the first right before the others came along before med and then it was the first yeah pd and then there was another one that was on for like a season and then stopped but it's crazy the success that the show has had but it's not completely unbelievable if you know what i'm saying because it's so good kind of throughout your career when you were doing all of this did you just ever have an aha moment where you were like, okay, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. This is something that I know I can do and that I'm good at. No, I think, <laughs> no, I think every, um, every day is like, it's, it's like a practice and a challenge and, um, and uh, I think that, I'm, I think that I'm decent at this point, you know, like there, I, um, I obviously I'm on, I'm on a show and, and they keep writing for me and I'm so grateful. 
Um, I just, I don't know. I was just talking to Eamon about this. He was helping me um, put an audition on tape for a film. And, uh, and I just love him because he was directing me and he was like, nope, don't believe you. Nope, don't believe you, you know, until we, until we got it. But one of the things that he told me afterwards, because I was feeling really insecure and I was like, do you, like, do you think, do you think I'm, I'm a good actress? And he kind of just <laughs> hung his head and, uh, and he was like, babe, he was like, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be satisfied with your work because you care. He's like, I'm never satisfied. So, I mean, this is something that I hope to do for the rest of my life. I'm very optimistic because I plan on, you know what I mean? Doing I get it. Yeah. Like it's in this industry. I mean, there are no guarantees unless you're like at some level, like a Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt. But even then as history and news and media tells us that could all come to a screeching halt, but I don't know. From my perspective as a viewer, I think you do fantastic on the show. And, um, you know, even uh, Pretty Little Liars, I had seen that when I was dating this girl. We watched that. She made me watch it. And then I started liking it. <laughs> so um, it was a great show, um, you know. And uh, so that's interesting. And Eamon Walker, for people that don't know, he plays Bowden uh, on your show. But I like that you, I mean, again, I just get the vibe that there's just a, it's a family, right? It's not just coworkers that you show up to every single day and do your scenes and then buck out at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, I mean, I wonder, like, I wonder if like the co, like the stars on the set of something like Succession, is a lot different because there is such contention in the writing and in that world. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if it, it because of the content that we're creating and the story that we're telling, and we all are really committed to this story and feel very grateful to get to tell this story of a, of a firehouse. It's like, what that requires is actual camaraderie. It requires you know, people who are willing to die for each other, quite literally, every day, not in a romantic, kind of just very, you know, literally. And that, wow, I mean, it's like, it's gorgeous. I mean, that is, that's exactly what we have. Yeah, well, and when you see other celebrities like yourself that are on that show or whatever, and they're impressed, you know, they always ask, the question, you know, are you like your character at all? Do you find yourself relating to your character? And so a lot of them will always say, oh, well, so-and-so is definitely like his character in real life, which is kind of scary in a way because I don't want to know somebody like somebody on a show like that, which it's a great show, but I get the contention there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking to you, Miranda. I don't, you know, see Stella, I, I mean, I, your bubbly personality definitely comes through and all of that, but I think, you understand what I'm saying? Like, and that's just good acting, being present and being aware and really knowing in your head, I had somebody tell me that for him, acting is not necessarily about emotion, although that's a piece, it's more of just about being clear in your head about who you are, what your character is about, the choices that you make as an actress, and then that eludes onto the screen and we get the great stories that we do. But honestly, like you're one of the first who have been so transparent about that because I don't know, like I, I can't imagine in a career like yours where you're on this show, but you just don't know what's going to happen. I, I mean, I don't see anything like that happening with your show because it just does so well, but other shows that go up and they, they come down and they get sunsetted really quick, right? Because it's just not something that people grab onto, but my God, the drama, all of that. I want to jump forward a little bit and talk about obviously COVID, not the negativity about it, but you guys were affected pretty intensely, right? You were in the middle of filming and then you got shut down and now you're kind of able to go through things, right? And, and bang it out and get scenes done. So we have episodes to watch. 
Yes, all of that is true. Um, we had um, we had a couple cases. The thing that has been really gorgeous is that number one, I mean, our our testing schedule is rigorous. Um, our and our production team. Oh, our our producers that are on the ground in Chicago, like we're so lucky. Um, one of our main producers, I mean, started off as a cameraman. So he knows the set. So, you know, when uh, corporate, you know, and the studio come down with all of these different, um, you know, regulations and thinking like, okay, well, we should do this and we should do that, but have no idea what it's like to actually be on set. Our producer and our producers have just been extraordinary in saying, no, that might work for LA, but this is Chicago. And this is what, this is what we need here. And it's an ongoing conversation. You know oh, what I mean? hundred percent, like, yeah. Every, it's, we have to be flexible. We have to be present. Um, I just am really, I'm just really impressed with like, you know, Wolf Films, um, and NBC and just our crew in particular, how they have taken the challenge head on and been like, all right, what do we gotta do? Let's bob and weave, what do we gotta do? And thank God it's like nobody who has tested positive has actually gotten sick. Nobody, we haven't had any, I mean, thank God we haven't, you know, everybody's been okay. <laughs> And yeah, that's, well, that's consider cool. yourself lucky because it sucks. I had it and it was not good. So, um, yeah, I just got my sense of smell back about two weeks ago. So. Oh, congrats. Yeah, I know, but I'm okay. But, and I think one of the upswings too is you guys have obviously written this into your storyline. So it's not like you're trying to do a jump forward and pretend like it's over, which we hope it will be, but everybody's wearing masks and you're doing all of that. So that has to help too, right? With all the other restrictions about how many people you can have in a scene or on set. So that's a benefit I would imagine. Sure. I mean, it is interesting. There are definitely, there are definitely times that like I, our characters should be wearing masks, but they're not, but like, <laughs> the, but the fact that, you know, we have it written in the story and I get it. It's like, you know, I think people, you know, people want to see our faces. And we're, te you know, we're the, we are like, I think we're the only group, we're the only department that we test every single day, even if we're not working. So, and we, you know, we take a rapid test every day that we have to be on set if we're, if we're close to each other, if we're kissing, you know, and we're the only people on set who, you know, can take our masks off. Which so. happens a lot on your show, as we joked earlier. So I can imagine when I watch all of that sexual tension that we joked about or the kissing or whatever you pick, it's like, oh my God, how many times a day do these guys get tested? They have to because, but I think though, obviously you keep your bubbles and all of that. Well, this is fantastic. And we've got hopefully more episodes coming soon. Again, I just watched the most recent one. And I, again, I thank you for your time. I know the schedule that you have is insane and just absolutely nuts. And it's, it's your day off, right? And you decided to hang out with us. So it means a lot. One it's last a pleasure. Yeah, of course. Well, one last question, kind of looking back at your career and all the things that you've done and including, I didn't think it's all been successful, but the big success of Chicago Fire was there any piece of advice that somebody ever gave you that you have held on to for the entirety of your career that you would pass on to somebody else if they asked you a young actor or actress and said, hey, Miranda, you know, this is kind of new for me. What advice do you have or just anything in life? Mm. Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like this question has been asked of me many times and I don't, I just, I don't have like a staple answer. You know what I mean? It's always different no matter. Sure. Asking. 
um, in this now moment, the thought that I'm having is, um, is like to play, like make, like get out of your mind that there's a right way to do a scene. It's like really become deeply committed to moving from a place of curiosity and discovery and play and seeing like what is possible? What, what can I experience with this person in front of me? Well, this, I mean, the, the metaphor, the metaphor that comes to mind, I'm like, want, I'm like, brace yourself. The metaphor that comes to mind is like, it's like good sex. Sure. Like no, energy. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, if you're too much in your head or you're too much, you have an expectation about like how it should go, then you're not going to be able to be present and to really enjoy the experience of being connected with another person or the other people that you're with, you know? So it's, I think it's the same in a scene. It's like being willing to relax, being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to try things and being willing to just let go of what's going to happen because then that's, it's a, it's a gamble. Something could come out that is totally like, all right, that didn't work at all. <laughs> and something can come out where it's like, oh my God, that was genius, but it only came through because you let it, you know? I totally get it. And that is the perfect way to end this interview. Everybody, let's have a cigarette, <laughs> watch Chicago <laughs> Fire and all the other Chicago shows, more episodes coming soon. Miranda, thank you for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Brett.